And we're going to finish the first chapter of Green Witch by Susan Cooper. We have reacquainted ourselves with Will Stanton, the last born of the Old Ones. He has met his uncle, his godfather, uh, Bill, for the first time ever. And they are going to go to Cornwall together. And we'll pick up at the break in the paragraph. Simon, Jane, and Barney struggled out of the St. Austral station beneath a cluster of suitcases, paper bags, raincoats, and paperbacks. The crowd from London, from the London train was dwindling about them, swallowed by cars, buses, taxis. He did say he'd meet us here, didn't he? Of course he did. I can't see him. He's a bit late, that's all. Great Uncle Mary is never late. We'll have to find out where the Truistic bus goes from, just in case. No, there he is. I see him. I told you he was never late. Barney jumped up and down, waving when he paused. But he's not on his own. There's a man with him. A faint note of outrage crept into his voice. And a boy! A car hooted preemptively once, twice, three times outside the Stanton's house. Here we go, said Uncle Bill, seizing his, his hold all in Will's knapsack. Will hastily kissed his parents goodbye, staggering under the enormous bag of sandwiches, thermos flasks, and cold drinks that his, mo that his mother dumped into his arms. Behave yourself, she said. I don't suppose, I don't suppose Mary will get out of the car, said Bill to her as they trooped down the drive. Very shy character, pay no attention, but he's a good friend, you'll like him, Will. Will said, I'm sure I shall. At the end of the drive, an enormous elderly Daimler stood waiting. Well, well, said Will's father respectfully. And I was worrying about space, said Bill. I might have known he'd drive something like this. Well, goodbye, people. Here, Will, you can get in front. A flurry of farewells, they climbed into the dignified car. A large muffler-wrapped figure sat hunched at the wheel, topped by a terrible hairy brown cap. Mary, said Uncle Bill as they moved off, this is my nephew and godson, Will Staunton, Ma'am and Lion. The driver tossed aside his dreadful cap, and a mop of white hair sprang into shaggy freedom. Shadowed dark eyes glanced sideways at Will out of an arrogant hawk-nosed profile. Greetings, old one, said a familiar voice into Will's mind. It's marvelous to see you, Will said silently happy. "'Good morning, Will Staunton,' Merriman said. "'How do you do, sir?' said Will. There was a considerable conversation on the drive from Buckinghamshire to Cornwall, particularly after the picnic lunch, when Will's uncle fell asleep and slumbered peacefully all the rest of the way. Will said at last, "'And Simon, Jane, and Bonnie have no idea at all that the dock timed its theft of the grail to match the making of the Green Witch.' "'They have never heard of the Green Witch,' Merriman said. You will have the privilege of telling them, casually, of course. Hmm, Will said. He was thinking of something else. I'd feel a lot happier if only we knew what shape the dark will take. An old problem with no solution, Merriman glanced sideways at him, with one bristly white eyebrow raised. We have only to wait and see, and I think we shall not wait for long. Fairly late in the afternoon, the Daimler hummed its noble way into the forecourt of the railway station at St. Austell, in Cornwall, standing on a small pool of luggage, Will saw a boy a little older than himself, wearing a school blazer and an air of self-conscious authority, a girl about the same height, with long hair tied in a ponytail and a worried expression, and a small boy with a mass of blonde, almost white hair, sitting placidly on a suitcase, watching them approach. If they are to, or, if they are to know nothing about me, he said to Merriman, in the old one's speech of the mind, they will dislike me extremely, I think. That may very well be true, said Merriman, but not one of us has any feelings that are of the least consequence compared to the urgency of this quest. Will sighed. Watch for the Green Witch, he said. And that's the end of chapter one.